with a view to ultimately scale up service delivery at the primary healthcare facilities. The Midwife Service Scheme, MSS, was introduced in 2009 with retired midwives, new graduates, and other qualified health workers engaged at the hinterlands. Few years down the line, Clementina Uchechukuchibeze Edam took a tour around primary health care facilities in some local government areas in Ebony State with assistance from International Budget Partnership, IBP, and the International Center for Investigative Reporting, ICIR, to know how helpful the scheme has been to the system and the sustainability plan by the government. Nigeria is a country that the heroes past desire to see its seed of greatness come to fall. With a clarion call for all hands to be on deck in order to make the project work. This informed the curiosity and passion to visit the hinterlands in order to ascertain how one of the country's policies on health, the Midwife Service Scheme, otherwise known as the MSS, introduced in 2009, is helping primary healthcare facilities succeed in terms of service delivery in a Bony state. Local government areas visited included a Bony, Ishelu, and the Hosra. Others were Afikbunov and Izasa local government areas. Tiring the facilities was indeed not an easy one, as some of them were 10 to 20 kilometers away from one another and even from the people. An indication that distance is one of the factors that make some of the rural dwellers not to access services from the center. For instance, Mrs. Grace Okonkwo enrolled and received at natal services for a few times and subsequently delivered her child at home due to far distance. It is the same story for some other women. I sent uh, somebody to go and call nurse for me before they will come back. I already delivered my, my baby. I did go far to reach. Like this woman, she delivered at home because the place is very far. Aguacha, near Izago. They have common boundary with Izago. Very far place. The resultant effect of this challenge is aptly captured by the statistics made available by the Boyne State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, where out of 61,233 registered pregnant mothers, only 22,013 finally made it to fourth visit and had their babies delivered by skilled health workers at the facilities in 2021, and from 36,643 to 11,407 in 2022. Apart from the fact that most of the midwives drafted to various facilities stopped work in 2021, thereby discouraging some of the women from going to give birth at the facilities, another factor that contributed to reduction in the figure is that in Ibi facility in Africa North local government area, the two skilled birth attendants are males. This, a member of EB World Development Committee, Mr. Ali Emmanuel Ihanacho said, makes the women who are mostly uneducated to shy away from delivering their babies there after registration for at Natal. So is a man, his health assistant is a man. All concerted effort has been done for um, female, mostly midwife, to be posted to the um, health facility. But all effort prove about it. Also, the allegation that some of the officers in charge of the facilities charged for delivery contributed to making the road dwellers resort to giving birth at home. They do collect money for delivery between 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, Last week, anyway, I made a payment of 7,000 naira for one of the old women that delivered in the village. In one of the facilities, just at a moment. Health uh, services are not free. Pregnant women, elderly men, elderly women, they are not being treated free. Policies are in place. It's only that the government, maybe the partners to the federal government, has not done their own part. However, the Executive Secretary of Ebony State Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Catherine Barry Oko, who confirmed that reports of health workers charging for childbirth and other services had come up in time past and were promptly addressed, promised that the issue raised concerning some of the facilities will equally be 
looked into. Also speaking, Desk Officer for Basic Healthcare Provision Fund in Ebony State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, Alego Leonard, believes that with the introduction of Community Health Influencers Promoters Program Services, CHIPS, which has already begun in two local government areas in the state, volunteers from development partners will be better streamlined to make the people better informed of their rights and privileges with more sensitization. At times, we have the ones that are free and the ones that are not free. For instance, a, a woman that came with, uh, on labor, in labor, uh, at times we have some drugs we give to the person, maybe some injections. But had even the woman came in and then did the uh, normal delivery, you should not collect anything. And then let me just uh, tell everybody that we have to give them card, which is 200 naira. And people, when you tell them, like, oh, woman, when we had the radio program, woman was saying, why should they pay 200 naira for card? Why should, when they say that it is free? I was like, wow. So we can't bring up 200 naira to pay for card. So it is like that, but we are warning them seriously because I have been hearing that some people will even collect 10,000, 5,000, 15,000. So we are seriously against it. And we are fighting to stop it. And I know it must surely stop. It is a government authority wise to bring these uh, groups of people together that have been uh, rendering services to the grassroots. And when all of them are brought together, then uh, since they are rendering service at different uh, um, levels or locations of the state or of the communities, if they are uh, taken together, uh, it will help to make sure that services are brought to the doorstep of the PIP fund. 5% of the fund that comes to us goes to chips, and 5% of funds that come to us also goes to the human, I mean uh, the adult nurse midwives. Yeah, so then another percentage goes for operation. So in terms of the CHIPS program, we have started with two LGS. Determined to further see things for ourselves, NTN News crew not minding the bad road made it to different facilities and were met with one or two community health workers managing the centers. Meanwhile, taking cognizance of the effect of shortage of manpower at the facilities on the people's health, development partners such as the USAID send staff to assist the community workers occasionally. Workload is much on us because I'm the only staff, trained staff here, apart from my the, uh, um, volunteers that I'm paying by the money that we generated here. And the work is not easy at all. You can see people are coming. Every time, like end of every month, in our general register, we do get up to 400. Only I alone is working here. How is it affecting you? It's affecting me all around, even in the register. We are working every 24 hours, but the, the work is too tedious to us. The uh, health facilities has so many challenges. Because of especially that issue of short, uh, short staff, even today, as we work here, we only work with two, the OIC and one volunteer. Yes, in uh, some of my inspections, uh, there are times I go there and you find out that uh, you may see only one person there. So when I ask them, they may tell me that others went for a seminar. That means um, they need maybe more staff. My name is Eze Sarah. I'm a volunteer here. I help our OIC. They pay me 10000 Oh, I'm not... We pay me... The Boise Commissioner of Health, who seems to have different view with regards to shortage of manpower at the facilities, equally said insufficient fund for the payment of the ad hoc midwives was the reason why they stopped work, though he said the state is making effort to bring them back. You see that whatever is happening to the federation account affects it, so we employ them. So within, it was coming down, so you can't cope. Because it was affecting what you can pay to these uh, adult nurses and midwives. So, until finally in 2021, when we got 35 or something billion, 
they gave us a standard benchmark from 342 to 80. That is what we can employ as ad hoc staff. But uh, I, I tell you that our state is doing very well because um, in the primary health centers, our problem is not mainly uh, that of uh, manpower, but in the secondary health center sector, I can tell you, yes, that is a, a real issue. Since the introduction of the midwife service scheme added value to service delivery at the primary health care level, it is advised for government to sustain it and also have the volunteer workers well trained. In Abakliki, Uchech Uchi Bezendam, NTA News.